Let me take a moment and talk about Riverside.fm. It allows you to record studio quality audio and up to 4K video. When you need to record audio and video, Riverside.fm can do it. So if you're looking for a hero platform for all your recording needs, from podcasts to webinars to any video content, Riverside.fm. I've got a promo code for you where you'll receive a 30% discount on the first three months of your subscription. I'll give it to you twice. The promo code is ship it. All one word, ship it, and you'll pick up a 30% discount on your first three months of your subscription. Riverside.fm. In this episode of the Football History Headlines, we discuss Teal Bruner, Dick Little Mo Modulesky, and Jerome Bettis' birthdays, as well as many more Hall of Fame legendary stories, all coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pigpen, your portal to positive football history. And we are in the middle of February. You know, the Super Bowl is passed, the Pro Bowl is done, the season's over, but the football history keeps on coming because we're bringing it to you each and every day with some football history headlines and some birthdays of Hall of Famers. And today we have one little piece of information that uh, happened on this date. It was February 16th, 1999, and O.J. Simpson, uh, the 1968 Heisman Trophy winner, he sold that trophy, that Heisman Trophy that he won, for just under a quarter of a million dollars, 230000 to be exactly, to help settle a $33.5 million civil judgment against Simpson for the deaths of his ex-wife, Nicole, and her friend. Uh, this is all per the onthisday.com website. Now, we, we know the famous trial. The, that was the criminal trial that you, you saw with the, you know, Johnny Cochran and F. Lee Bailey and the, the rest of them and the whole uh, big trial that was on television you know, after the, the white Bronco scene, chase scene. But this is the civil suit that the uh, Nicole's family had and Ron Goldman's uh, family had filed against Simpson for the wrongful death of their, their children, their family. And, you know, Simpson had to sell everything he had to get it. And one was that Heisman Trophy. And uh, it happened on this date in 1999. Sad but true, uh, news is the news. Uh, Let's go to some Hall of Fame birthdays for a little bit happier mementos of this day, February 16th. 1931, in West Natrona, Pennsylvania, the University of Maryland's great tackle, Dick Little Mo Moduleski was born. Dick was one of three brothers that had collegiate careers for the Terps. And according to the National Football Foundation's website bio on Little Mo, in his three varsity years, Maryland had a 22-game unbeaten streak. And in 1951, Maryland was ranked third in the nation and knocked off a top-ranked team, Tennessee, in a Sugar Bowl. 28-13 to 13 was the final score of that game. And Dick was honored with induction in the College Football Hall of Fame in 1993 after the National Football Foundation tallied up their votes. Now we have another great Hall of Famer, Teal Bruner, who was born on this date, February 16, 1964, in London, Kentucky. Now, Teal Bruner was an outstanding safety from Center College uh, when he arrived at the state in 1964 on the date of his birth. Bruner lettered for four years, 1982 through 85, as a defensive back for Center College in Danville, Kentucky. And he was credited with 20 interceptions, 19 block passes, four fumble recoveries, and one touchdown for the Football Foundation's website. Teal tied the national record in 1984 game against Rose Hallman when he had five interceptions in that game. The National Football Foundation selected Teal Bruner for entrance into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1999. 
Now it's time to drive that bus. Yeah, you got it. February 16th, 1972, Detroit, Michigan. The powerful running back from the University of Notre Dame, Jerome Bettis, celebrates his birthday. The St. Louis Rams selected Jerome in the first round, 10th overall, in the 1993 NFL Draft. And in just his first season as a pro, Bettis received the Rookie of the Year honors and was second in yardage in the league that year and third in total yards from scrimmage for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. A few years later, he was famously traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers, where he remained for the balance of his 13-year career. He led the Rams in rushing in three seasons, and the Steelers in eight. And when he retired, he amassed 13,662 yards rushing, which at the time listed him as fifth highest total in NFL history. He was an All-Pro in a couple of different seasons, and he played in six Pro Bowl games. And Jerome Pettis was selected for enshrinement in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2015's class of inductees. Now, what a way to go out. You know, we said, you know, Jerome Pettis, Detroit, Michigan. And that was the story of Super Bowl 40 that was played at Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. And the Steelers, the year before, had ended up losing the AFC Championship game with a rookie quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger at the time, and Pettis, you know, the veteran running back, was he was going to hang, hang it up. And somehow Roethlisberger, the rookie, went to Pettis and promised him, hey, you can come out one more year and be that constant force of running that you've been. I'll get you the Super Bowl. And somehow Pettis believed him. And you know what? It paid off because they made it that next year uh, as a wild card team, went in the playoffs and uh, defeated everybody in the AFC, made it in the Super Bowl, unlikely candidates. You know, they played, they played the, the AFC championship. They played the powerful Indianapolis Colts who were on a roll with Peyton Manning. And they almost lost that game. Bettis fumbled that ball at the one yard line when, you know, the, the ice the game. All he had to do was fall on it, you know. Uh, fall on the running play and not even get in his touchdown. But he scores a touchdown. It's definitely ice. He fumbles it, and Indianapolis defender picks it up and starts running down the field, and Roethlisberger, in his second year, shoestring tackle at midfield. Somehow the Steelers hold on. The, the kick is no good when they try the field goal attempt. The Steelers hang on and win. Bettis goes to his hometown, Detroit, Michigan, uh, and leads the team out on the field for Super Bowl Forty. And the Steelers end up winning that game over the Seattle Seahawks. And Bettis gets his ring, and he goes off in the sunset. You know, what a way to go. Almost like a, a John Elway-type story. But, uh, you know, the fifth leading rusher in the league's history at the time. And what a way to go out. Jerome Bettis, the bus. you got to respect him. And uh, just a, a big guy with a big heart and a big personality and fun to watch. Uh, as a player, both in college and on a pro game. So we, we thank you once again for joining us here for these great uh, historic look backs in history and remembering these great players and great events that happened in football history. And we hope that you'll join us each and every day because we bring to you football history to you each and every day of the year and hopefully some good stories. Hopefully we all learn something together and preserve the great gridiron history. Till tomorrow, everybody, have a great gridiron day. That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? you should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum 
at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com row one and save 15% off your order.